by our next guest. He's in our studio right now. His name is Casey Ganda. Good morning. Hey, guys. Good. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks So for you're an Illinois State graduate of uh, 2012. You, you came up with this. 2013. Yeah, 20, yep. excuse me. 11 months ago. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and you came up with this great idea of pay-per-view uh, reading of college tech textbooks. You know, I remember buying mine all new, all fresh and new, and they were fresh and new when I got done with them because I never opened them up. So tell us about your plan and how did uh, Cuban invest in it? Sure, sure. So, you know, the story is uh, students are broke and they're in debt, right? Over a trillion dollars of student debt out there nationally. Um, so they rush to go buy used books. Unfortunately, they're used books that are oftentimes rarely used in the classroom. And they still shell out around $1,000 a year on these books they rarely ever use. And parents, again, foot a lot of this bill. So. Uh, we rent digital textbooks for three to five dollars a day, allow a student to pay per use, fill out a course. Uh, students save hundreds on underutilized textbooks, but at the same time, if they continue to rent, they eventually own the book, so they'll never overpay, right? So a student never overpays. At the same time, we're reclaiming millions of dollars in lost revenue to a financially suffering publishing industry who's just bleeding revenue due to these used books, right? So it's a it's a win-win for the entire industry, and we're, we're fixing this essentially broken textbook. Uh, except for uh, all the academics who's uh, you're getting into their pockets, right? They, they must be, uh, there must be an outrage, because I remember I'd have professors, and of course you buy their book, and their book was $80, $120, $170, very expensive. And it seems like this is a more cost-effective way to provide that information. So how is it being received in academia? Yeah, so it's actually the same books that are still being used. So what's great is it's, it, everyone wins, right? Even the authors, even the professors that author the books. Because again, on these used books, uh, after the first sale, no one gets any revenue after the second, third, fourth, fifth sales, right? So, so again, it's a win-win for the students, the publishers, the authors, the professors. Professors love it because they're actually saving their classes money. For, uh, parents love it because, again, Wait, parents are the ones paying the bills. So. I am not going to listen to some punk who just graduated from Illinois <laughs> State who's come up with an idea that I would never be able to come up with. Um, how do you have, I, I'm a zero-sum kind of guy. How do you have win, win, win? How does everybody win? Somebody's got to lose here. Yeah, I think this has been the challenge in education, right? So, uh, it, again, uh, everyone wins here, but the challenge is executing. And I think it's something that we've been able to pull off with out of the company. Uh, our junior year of college uh, just kind of grinded it through, now graduated, raised just under a million dollars in venture funding. Of course, uh, Mark Cuban was a big one. And Shark Tank aired to 8.1 million viewers in the most watched episode in, in Shark Tank history. So, so are, are you doing the crowdfunding as part of the money raised too, or are you been going to all uh, venture and venture investors? So what, from Chicago. what was the Shark Tank experience like, and what was it that the Cuban said to you closed the sale for him? Yeah, so I think more than anything, at the end of the day, he just believed in us as entrepreneurs. Uh, but also, Mark Cuban, he's pretty passionate about education. Uh, again, this textbook issue is, is a large industry issue. It's uh, you know, textbook prices have, have been rising uh, four times inflation, exceeded the rate of increase of healthcare, housing, tuition. These are major industry issues, right? People know textbooks are expensive, but they never compare it to things like this. And Cuban definitely picked up on it, picked up on the fact that we were executing and you know, we could make it happen. Right. Is, is, is this going to get down to that beyond college, down to K through 12? So I think the next step, uh, you know, we look at, we could do a, a number of different things with content. Uh, we already serve graduate level, you know, PhD programs, master programs. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens in the next step. All right. Yeah. And this is just a stepping stone for you. So what are you going to do after this? Well, our goal is, you know, Packback's got to become a, a household name across college campuses and parents for, you know, anyone, anytime everyone thinks about textbooks. I mean, beyond the textbook Packback. thing, I mean, what, what's your goal? What do you want to be, president? What do you want to do? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see, right? <laughs> well, what do you want to do? I think uh, more than a year out of, ahead of the time. No, wait a minute. So, I bet you're so precocious. Is interview? Uh, where do you see yourself I want to see where years? Casey Gannon sees himself in five or 10 or 20 years. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, we've we've got an amazing team with, with Packback, right? And we've been oh, fortunate right, enough right. to have some, some awesome investors. Yeah, yeah, and he, he knows, he knows he how to deny an, and not answer questions. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's going to be a politician. Yeah, but, right. And, and this was part of what were you... Did you use 1871 as an incubator? Yeah, so we uh, we would actually sneak into 1871, skip our classes our senior year, and try and pitch venture uh, venture capital investors. All right, throughout this good luck to you. Uh, you'll be giving me a job, well, my <laughs> grandchildren a job someday. Thanks so much. Yeah, for sure. Congratulations. Parents, go check to you. out Packback for your students' books, and thanks, guys, for having us. All right, the 